Welcome students, Tom Harmer here, your accounting professor. And this will be a demonstration of accounting for the issuance of a bond and making several biannual payments. Now remember, the board of directors has decided to issue bonds rather than sell more stock in order to raise capital for their business. If they sell more stock, then it dilutes and reduces the income per share and all the people on the board of directors own shares of that stock and they don't want to see their dividends per share going down. So, therefore, they're issuing a bond. So this example here, we're issuing a $6 million bond. It's a 10-year bond, 9% interest rate. That's the bond rate, the contract rate. And they're issuing it at 96. So when they created the bonds, the interest rate was 9%, but now the market is demanding a higher interest rate. They don't tell us what that rate is. They just give us the discount rate here. The interest is payable on July 1st and January 1st. Straight line method of bond amortization is done. So I've created here a little work area that you can use or not. I'll be using it for this demonstration and so therefore, you will see the math that I do to uh, accomplish this problem. Now, the first thing here is we want to prepare the bond amortization table. So I'm going to take the numbers from this problem. The face, the face value of the bond is six million. So I'm coming here, and the price, stock exchange for at 96. The carrying value of the bond equals. Let me come over here equals 96 times 600,000 divided by 100 for that percentage. So that's 5,760,000. So I'm going to calculate my discount here by going equals 6 million minus the carrying value. So our discount when we issue the bonds is 240,000. Okay, now the bond interest rate is 9%. And the number of periods here, it's a 10-year bond, but it's making biannual payments, so that's 20 periods. There you go, so I've got my data there. Now I'm going to create my bond amortization table, and then I'll be using the bond amortization table to do all of my journal entries. Okay, so I've already populated here, I've got my unamortized premium and discount. This is the issue date here. Issue date, we've got $240,000 discount. And I've got the subtracted discount from the face. That gives us a bond carry value of 5760000 Okay, so now we want to complete our amortization table. Now this bond is paying 9% divided by two because we're making two payments per year. So see, here's the formula, percent times the face divided by two. So I come here, I'm gonna go equals, here's my percentage times the face divided by two. So that's my interest payment. In case the interest payment is always the same. So I can put an equal sign here and copy that right there, boom, and then copy that right down. So that'll be the same. That interest payment will be the same every payment that we make. Now, we have here the amortization of the bond discount. So the bond discount is going to be amortized over 20 years. So therefore, this 240000 divided by 20 equals 240000 divided by 20 is how much of that bond discount we'll be taking each time we make an interest payment biannually. Okay, now it's straight line, so they're going to be the same every time. So we got mm, equals, and then I'll copy that down. Okay, now the interest expense is calculated by taking the interest payment and we're adding the bond discount. If it was a premium, then we would be reducing the interest expense. But because we sold this for less than the face, that was an expense incurred at the, at the issuance of the bonds. We're gonna amortize that over the life. So here, 
we've got interest expense equals the 270,000 minus the bond discount, which is minus times a minus is a plus, so that brings us to $282,000 is the interest expense. And we're gonna do that the same on every particular payment. The unamortized discount after the first payment equals the prior balance of the unamortized discount minus the discount for that particular payment. There we go. So you see that came down. So our unamortized discount is now 228. So the carrying value is going to be the face. So I'm going to put my equal sign here. Equals the face 600,000 deducting the unamortized discount. So that's going to be plus the negative unamortized discount which brings us up. So our carrying value has gone up by $12,000. Okay, now I want to copy this formula down. So I'm coming up here to my formula. This is column E, row three. So I'm going to lock that three in because I'm going to copy down. That's a dollar sign is dropping an anchor on that. So now I can copy this formula down. All these formulas, boom. And you see my my unamortized discount is dropping and dropping as every payment goes by. So now we've completed at least to this extent the amortization table for the bonds so now we can start journalizing. Our first assignment here is prepare the journal entry for the sale of the bonds on January 1. So I've got January 1 and I've got cash. We issued those bonds for cash. And that was 5760000 All right, and then we've got a discount on bonds payable. We've got here, come down here, we know that we got bonds payable is the $6 million. And the difference between the $6 million and the cash we received is the discount that we gave, which was 240000 there we go, we have journalized the issuance of the bonds. Next, we prepare the journal entry to record the bond interest payment on July 1st. So we've got July 1 here. Then we've got bond interest expense. And that is going to come from our bond amortization table. We know we're issuing a check for 270,000, but we're amortizing the discount by 12,000 and so our interest expense is the total of the two for 282,000. So then I've never amortizing that bond discount on bonds payable. Okay, and that's going to be 12,000 credit in cash. Next step is to Prepare the journal entry for the accrual of interest on December 31st. The next payment isn't until January 1st, but we always do all of our adjusting entries at the end of an accounting period and we have to accrue that bond interest expense. So here we are on December 31st. So we come up here to our chart once again. And we can see our bond interest expense is the same at 282. So we'll go ahead and we've got here 282,000. We're amortizing the same amount. And our payable is 270,000. That's how much we will have to cut the checks for January 1st. So then we continue on to prepare the journal entry to pay the interest on, well, I said January 2nd because it's always a holiday on the 1st. So we got um, bond interest payable and credit to cash. So there we go. There we go. There's the whole problem. So we have issued, we've created the bond amortization table. We've journalized the issuance of the bond. Then we've journalized the first payment in July. And then we've accrued the interest expense on December 31st. And then we've paid the second payment on January 1st. And that's how to do the problem. Thank you very much.